Hello everyone, this is Rod from Academia Magica. Welcome back. Today's topic is about the work and the figure of Marsilio Ficino. I think everybody's familiar with the name of Marsilio Ficino, considering uh, that he was the one translating the uh, Corpus Hermeticum for the first time in the 15th century from Greek into uh, Latin, but most likely not everybody is familiar to the fact that Ficino was also uh, the author of one of the most important work on magic written in the Renaissance, um, not only a milestone in the Renaissance, but I would say um, a in very influential book that is still influential today within the context of uh, Western esoteric uh, history. And I'm talking about his work, uh, De Vita Libri Tres, the three books about life, especially uh, the third one called De Vita Coelitus Comparanda, as is a work, uh, an amazing work uh, related to astral magic. And this is something that we would like to see a little bit more in details today. But before we move into that, just a couple of words about who was Ficino uh, himself. He was the son of a physician, uh, actually a important physician because uh, his father was attending uh, Cosimo de' Medici, Cosimo de' Medici being the head of the very famous and powerful Medici family in, in Florence. Ficino became a physician himself, was very well known for his scholarship in uh, Greek language and classic studies, um, an astrologer within a certain limits as Marsilio Ficino was also a pious Christian. So everything that he did, everything that he exposed was very carefully blended and put in a very digestible context uh, in order not to clash with the uh, Catholic Church. So considering his knowledge on classic Greek, uh, Cosimo de' Medici assigned him the homework of translating uh, the uh, work, uh, the writings of Plato from Greek to Latin for the very first time. Uh, we are in uh, early Renaissance period, so nothing is known about um, the Hellenistic period, nothing is known about the pagan uh, tradition or the Greek pagan tradition, and we are within a very oppressive context uh, by the uh, Catholic Church. So Cosimo de' Medici asked him to do the translation of, of Plato, which was not actually the first translation of an important work from Ficino. He started with the Orphic hymns at the beginning, and most likely the Orphic hymns was the first shock from Ficino, where he really had to uh, challenge his uh, Christianity with the new idea coming from the Hellenistic pagan tradition. Then in the middle of uh, the translation of Plato, Cosimo de' Medici got on hold of the Corpus Hermeticum, one, um, one version of the Corpus Hermeticum, and he asked Ficino to stop the translation of Plato, complete the Corpus Hermeticum first, and he did. At the same time, Cosimo de' Medici also provided him with an estate, with a villa, uh, outside of Florence, where he could fully dedicate to his studies, his translations. Uh, and this villa um, started to become also a kind of center for uh, people interested in his work, interested in to hear about what were this new idea coming from, from the Greek classics of Platonic, Neoplatonic, Hermetic. And uh, this, this circle, this, this group of people, um, that started to join uh, in the discussion in this place uh, were formally, informally, sorry, known as the um, Academy, the Platonic, the Platonic Academy of Marsilio Ficino. Among these people, there were very famous uh, people during the time. Pico della Mirandola was one of them, uh, Botticelli, the famous painter, and so on. Then finally, when he completed the translation 
of the uh, Corpus Hermeticum actually completed is not the right word because the uh, 18 books of the Corpus Hermeticum were uh, the last four chapters were completed by Ludovico Lazzarelli. But anyhow, when he completed the work of um, the translation of the Corpus Hermeticum and the uh, writings of Plato, he didn't stop there. He just continued to translate the Aeneids of, of um, Plotinus, most of the work of uh, Iamblichus and Proclus, and pretty much all the very important writing, uh, the heritage from the Neoplatonic thought. So I would say we can say that Ficino, despite having uh, put his, his hands on both uh, philosophical thought, both the uh, Hermetic thoughts from the uh, Corpus Hermeticum and the Platonic and Neoplatonic thought, I would say Ficino's heart always has beaten at the rhythm of the Neoplatonic thought. In fact, the Hermetic writing were not one of the major uh, influence into his uh, later works. But now let's uh, focus, let's move back and focus on uh, the work, the De Vita, which is the work that interests us the most for the most for the discussion of today. So as we mentioned, De Vita uh, is divided in three books. Uh, one book, the first book is concerned about uh, physical health, as we mentioned, Ficino, son of a physician, he was also a physician himself. The second book is about how to prolong life. And finally, the third book is about astral influences. So very strong astrological uh, related kind of writing. In this book, Ficino confirms the Aristotelian uh, cosmology, but he also adds a lot more. He's adding clearly a concept taken from the Picatrix. He's adding concept from the metaphysic of uh, Plotinus, Proclus, and other uh, Iamblichus and uh, other Neoplatonic thinkers. And this book most likely was the book that placed Ficino in a shaky ground because he had to move uh, carefully uh, between pagan tradition, Christian language, balancing uh, the Neoplatonic and Hermetic uh, thoughts without clashing with the uh, Christian and Catholic thinking that were oppressing that specific period in, in, in time. So essentially, what is this book about? This book is uh, how a magician, how a person as a magician uh, can tune in into the life-giving properties of nature with a sp specific reference to the influence of the planet. So what are some important takeaways from uh, this, this book. So first of all, starting from the first chapter, is discussing the relation between the stars and the material world. This, I think, is one of the most important concepts of the medieval astrology that was not only uh, concerned about uh, the charts, but was also concerned about what kind of influence we receive from the planets, from the uh, sphere and from the fixed stars. So first of all, is dividing his remedies or, or cures into two um, main groups. One is the, we could call it the physical group, which is actually how to collect, how to mix and how to ingest uh, medicine and herbs. So how, when these herbs should be collected, mixed and taken according to the uh, astrological um, favorable day and, and time. And here a very important, uh, an important point that he makes, and I think this is very interesting for whoever actually practically work with, with astral magic, that is not only recommending the day and the time of, of the planet for the correspondence, but also to make sure that the planet needs to be in, a, in its domicile or in an exalted sign and uh, for the moon to be in a positive aspect with the planet. The second group is related to the spiritual and mental remedies. So attuning the thoughts and action that correspond to the planet, like for instance, spending time alone, studying would enhance uh, the uh, Mercurial or uh, Saturn kind of influence, while joining more public activity, social activity would make a person more jovial, more toward receiving the uh, Jupiter's influences. 
Another very important point in his writing is uh, he considered what he called the three graces, the three most important planets for the um, well-being of a person for Ficino were Jupiter, uh, the Sun and, and Venus. In fact, he calls these three planets the three uh, graces. And not only the three graces are uh, important for the well-being of a person, but at the same time, we need to be careful also the position and the aspect of the Moon and Mercury in respect to the uh, three planets of Jupiter, Sun and Venus. So in his thought is something like uh, the uh, beneficial influence of the Sun, Venus and, and, and Jupiter can be actually well received only if the Moon and Mercury are um, in a positive aspect with these planets. It's somehow like Moon and Mercury are keeping the gates between uh, the uh, planets, the, the, the celestial spheres, and the material world. So Ficino really presented a 360 degrees holistic approach um, with herbs, uh, with tastes, with uh, scents, with music. So all the five senses were considered important for Ficino to be stimulated and to be attuned according to the astrological influence that we wanted to uh, we want to receive. So music, for instance, is related and has the nature of Apollo. Apollo being uh, solar uh, divinity, as well to some degrees related to Mercury, Venus, and and Jupiter as well. While he's saying that, uh, for instance, Moon, Mars, and Saturn uh, literally say that they have voices, but they do not sing. Ficino teaches us also how to attune to our personal demon, uh, demon in the Platonic sense, so what we would call today the Holy Guardian Angel or the Higher Self. Um, and what he says in this regard is that um, the astrologers agree with Platonists that the guardian demon of every individual whatsoever can be two. One proper to his nativity, the other to his profession. As often as our profession agrees with our nature, we are attended by the same demon for each, or at least a very similar one. And our life will then be more internally harmonious and tranquil. But if our profession sits ill with our natural bent, the demon acquired by art is discordant with the natural genius, and the life can be troublesome and require a lot of care. And he's, by the way, teaching the method on how to attune to uh, our personal demon by using, um, by using the, birth, the astrological birth chart. Finally, in uh, the, the Vita Coelius Comparanda, he also, of course, there is an influ influence from uh, Iamblichus and influence from the Picatrix. So he's also mentioning about the uh, making of statues and the making of talismans in order to uh, concentrate the uh, influence from the planets. But um, he leaves this a little bit on out of context. Of course, this was a very dangerous topic to go into and he specifically distanced himself he just mentioned it but he distanced himself um, referring to uh, Thomas Aquinas uh, where he warns against the construction of artificial images uh, are thought to be luring uh, evil demons instead of beneficial influences. Wine itself also covers a very important place in Ficino's recommendation Wine, of course, is associated uh, with uh, Dionysus, as much as the grape, for the grape, for instance, that are squeezed, fermented, they die to be transformed in, in, in wine. And it's kind of the representation of the god uh, itself, like Dionysus going through the sparagmos and those representing some kind of life and death at the same time. Wine also represents the element of earth, therefore the connection to the intimate nature of the true self. 
So of course it's not talking uh, about getting intoxicated or getting drunk with wine, but he's uh, specifically talking about, for instance, to give the idea about that one glass of wine that you can drink after a hard day of work, and it just sets uh, the material world aside, it puts you in a relaxing situation to enjoy the present time and to be more receptive um, toward the environment. In fact, was of the one of the motto of the Platonic Academy of uh, Ficino was Letos in Presence, which in, in Latin means to be uh, happy or to enjoy the moment. Finally, as a reference of today's discussion, I would definitely uh, recommend to read the uh, three books of the De Vita, or at least specifically the third one, the De Vita Coelitus Comparanda of Ficino, as well as an interesting book written by Thomas More, uh, which is called The Planet Within, the Astrological, the Astrological Psychology of Marsilio Ficino. And that's about it for this, today's discussion. Again, thanks for staying with me, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.